direction, you better pursue it. That business. Okay, now I'm all out. I'm trying to do this, get this all together. Okay. I don't want to add no links. I don't want to do none of that. Okay. Is I'm live. I'm live. Let me get back on here. Okay. Is somebody knocking on my door? Okay. <clears throat> okay we're telling your followers that you started a live video okay great that'd be great all right i think i got everybody on here okay I'm back. I finally got the Facebook. Hey, y'all. I got the Facebook back going. Even though, I don't even know. This ain't even working. Okay. So, right. So, about the video that I posted yesterday, okay. Um, I, I had people contacting me. Some people was contacting me. First of all, the video was done April 8th. So it is an old video being that we're in August. However, I do appreciate the people who reached out and were concerned with my well-being and everything, who offered funds and food and all type of stuff. I appreciate I appreciate y'all. I do. Um, but if you read that little caption that I had wrote, it say that it's the old video and it was from April 8th. So I never really post like if I'm going through something, first of all, I'm very private, so um, it's difficult for me to post those type of things. But God is leading is is leading me through a season where He is requiring me to be more um, transparent with different things, be more vulnerable, and to speak publicly about things um, because those are the things that are going to help other people to be able to get through them. So. Um, so yes, I went through that whole situation with the food, um, and it just it it I wasn't I didn't starve y'all I didn't starve, but it it did humble me a lot because during that time, um, I had just I I started going to food pantries, I started doing what I had to do, you know, and it's not the first time that I've had to make it through a situation. So I made it through, you know, God has me in a season of sustaining. And so the misconception that I had about being sustained is that I was going to have extra and abundance and overflow all the time. You know, a lot of people, when, when you answer a call, to your purpose, to your destiny, when God calls you and you answer with that yes, we be thinking that stuff gonna flip around. Like I'm gonna be back on top. I'm gonna be back making my money, my money. You know, gonna be back living the lifestyle that I used to live before, and it's just not so. So God just keeps reminding me that I'm in a season of sustaining. So um, I don't really post that stuff until I have the full testimony. And so now I got the full testimony. So I was ready to post that yesterday, which is why I waited so long to post it. So anyway, um, if you saw the video, you know, I, I um, it is really raining. Out the blue. Okay. So you saw that I was going through a season where, um, what is it called? I was having like a food insecurity. I had bought all these groceries and then my refrigerator ran out and all my stuff went bad. And then I'm just going to yell over this rain because it's being disrespectful. Oh my goodness. Are you serious right now? Uh, so anyway, let me just stay focused because already it's been too much. It's, it's distractions going on and I got to get this out. So anyway, was having a little food insecurity moment and um so i didn't know what i was gonna do and i've been just doing what i had to do for the past couple of months so this testimony is a two-part um 
I've been having the food insecurity because my bills, like, you know, when God moved me here, he moved me here. I did not have a job. He's been sustaining me for almost three years. And if y'all follow me, then y'all have heard some of the stories that some of the things, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, um, and things that God has done for me. However, um, it's just, it's not the lifestyle that I'm used to living. And so I'm like, you know, being sustained is you think it's easy because you don't have to worry about nothing but at the same time you worrying about it because god like literally comes through right when it's due like he don't he don't come through a couple days before he come through like the day of if not after you know so um i've been struggling trying to get my food stamps back okay and also i've been you know laying, going to god and laying that before him and then also with my um car payment because i have a situation going on with kia from when i bought my car they they did some little razzle dazzle on my paperwork i agreed to one thing verbally as soon as quick as they went back in the back and got the paperwork and all of that now you know we don't be reading for real and that's on me. But Kia will get sued. Okay. Um, but they did a little razzle dazzle. And bamboozled me with my paperwork. And had me paying almost. Um, a little bit more than double for my car. My car cost $15,000. Kia charged me $40,000 for a car. Pocketed my down payment of $5,000. It's a whole situation. So I'm dealing with that. And in dealing with that. I've really been going before the Lord. And laying that before him. Because that's something that. Um, it's really kind of out of my control. I didn't do anything to contribute to me being in that. I wasn't, you know, recklessly spending or none of that. But it's been a struggle because my car note is almost $600 a month. And I'm having to deal with that because I don't have the money for the attorney to sue them. So I just have to deal with that. So I'm dealing with that financially amongst other things. Um, you know, God has blessed me with people that he has assigned to my life to give to me so there are people who pay my rent $1,300 every month and pay my car note $582.31 every month every single month they pay it for me and it's just been such a blessing because they understand that this is something that God told them to do God impressed it upon their hearts to do for me and so this is what they're doing um so that's a blessing so what happened was when i get the money i tithe on everything um people say i had somebody even ask me why are you tithing on money that you don't make like you don't make that much money at your part-time job and i'm like no i don't but it, you you don't tithe on your income you tithe on your increase and so with that being said it's like if if somebody gives me money, if if I go outside and find a dollar, I'm giving ten cent towards my tithe. Like I'm that for real about. I am a serial sower, and I tithe on everything. I don't play those type of games because that's how I receive my blessings, and I I, I believe that by faith. So anyway, I got the nineteen hundred dollars for my rent um, for August, and I got the five eighty two thirty one. You know. Well, the 582.31 was included in the 1900. And so, of course, if you do your math and you take your tithe of $1,900, that's $190. So I said, I've never really, I've never missed a tithe for as long as I can remember for years and years and years. So I'm not going to start now just because, you know, I got a situation going on. So I gave them 190 knowing that that was going to leave me short for my car note. I gave them 190 so that left me almost $200 short for my car note. And I had started, like, my faith started wavering a little bit. And I'm like, God, I, <sighs> I just don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how it's going to work. I was believing in God for somebody to send me some more money. But a lot of times when we be believing in God for stuff and asking for God, a lot of times we be um, reducing we re we we be reducing like the sovereignty and 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 the greatness of God to our own capacity to to our to our carnal understanding and that's what I was doing like God I don't know how you gonna do this what you mean how he gonna do this like what's a bill to a big God like what is that and so I've been taking it before him taking it before him I'm in church 
um last week and my apostle says that he prophesied uh over the congregation and said there's somebody in here that is believing that they're caught that you're gonna lose your car he said but god is god says you're not gonna lose your car and so i received that for myself man with the hollering and hooping and all of that and so um that same that next day I paid the hundred or that same day I paid the hundred and ninety dollars for the tithe the next day which would have been August 4th my car note was due 58231 which I did not have I only had about four hundred dollars to my name and that was to go for the rest of my bills and everything lights everything so um, I was worried and I was in my flesh and I had wavered in, in my faith and I took it before the Lord again like Lord I want I want big faith like I don't want to waver because you've pro proven to me so many times that you're 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 who you say you are are they what are they sewing stuff outside it's not like they saw in metal I'm not here for the distractions today, but they are working. But I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Oh my gosh. I need to stay out of my flesh. Okay. So um it's so much noise outside. Okay. So anyway, so I said, Lord, you know, I'm sorry I repent I repented. For even doubting that he was going to be able to, you know, come through with my car note. And um, so, like I said, the fourth is when it was due. I go on my account just to make sure that I still owe $582.31. And I looked on there just to show it. It's like, hey, girl, it's due today. $582.31. And so I was like, well, they ain't finna snatch my little 400 So I just transferred the 400 from the checking account to the savings account. You know how we be doing because you can't touch the savings account for real. So I transferred it. And then um, I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer. I got up that night. Y'all, I tell y'all no lie. What I was thinking that God was going to do for me in a tangible way. He did for me in the supernatural. I got up the next day, which was August 5th, and checked my account. Why Why do I keep going back to the account and checking it? And nothing changed. Just like, why do we go back to the refrigerator 10 times and it's the same stuff in there? We think it's going to automatically change what's inside. Okay. So I go back to my account, and it says, last payment received, August 4th, which was the day before, $582.31. So I said, oh my gosh, they done gave me a non-sufficient fund. So I'm thinking they done went through my bank account, ran it, and the bank paid it, even though I didn't have the money. Because sometimes they do that at Navy Federal. I look, my little 400 done, still sitting there. I don't see no non-sufficient funds. In my head, I go back to wavering my faith. Because I said, okay, maybe they had a glitch in the system. So I waited literally to the 8th, to two days ago, till I actually really received the fact that God had supernaturally paid my car note. $582.31 mysteriously got paid. <laughs> it supernaturally got paid by the grace of God, by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. My car note was paid. And I... It's still right now today, I still got my little 400 done. Ain't nothing went through to my bank account. Nothing came out of my bank account. And it says that my car note was paid for August. Like, I, 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 I have just, you know, my apostle um, declared that August would be the month of awe. Where we're just going to be in awe of the things that God is going to do for us. And I'm telling you, since like August 1st, I, I, it's just been like jaw-dropping. It has been jaw-dropping and I have been in awe. So that's the first testimony about my car note. Okay, so that happened. That was on the 4th. Like I said, on the 8th is when I realized that, okay, this was really God. And, um, so I, man, I, I had just been on my face 
I've been on my face for the past two days, just praising God, praising God, really for the past week. So when it comes to the food situation, my testimony with that, um, and there are so many other testimonies, but God has only God has only led me to share these two. So with the food, <laughs> the food stand office kind of find out they are short staff. And have been short staffed since probably like March. Now, the situation with my food going bad, it happened in April. And then, so that happened April 8th. And then I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Because I didn't have no money to buy food. So I'm waiting for more food stamps to come. Because I'm not supposed to get a payment. You know, some some supposed to drop. And my stuff. And so I'm like... When is my food stamps going to come? They never show up. I'm checking every couple of days. They're not showing up. They're not showing up. They're not showing up. So then I hear people telling me like they having problems with theirs too. And I'm like, okay, this is not cool. So I look on my account maybe two weeks after all my, the food situation. And my account, my food stamp account, it says like, oh, you got denied. I never got no letter. Nobody never called me. Nobody never told me it was time to renew. Like, I, it, I, I don't know nothing. They just cut my food stamps off. Just cut them off with no warning, no nothing. So I, I'm livid. I'm pissed off, if we be real about it. And I'm kind of, I'm in limbo because I'm, I'm having faith for all these things. Because like I said, it's, it was so many things going on in April it was so many things going on in April and I was I was just slowly just breaking down I was breaking down breaking down breaking down and like I said on the video I, I've never had to beg nobody for food like and I use the word beg because that's what it looked like to me I don't know um I've never had to like go and ask ask for food and 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 go to food pantries and anything like that but I did that you know and the thing about it when I thought about it, I said, you know, God, you are still so good because I'm spoiled a little bit and, and, and I can be entitled and prideful at times, even though a lot of times I don't look at it as being prideful, but that's my pride. <laughs> See how that works? And so um, it's it's prideful because I can go to the store and I can swipe a card, even though it's a food stamp card, like a credit card to me. I can swipe a card, get what I want. You know, I could I could go to the store, I could get gas, I could go when I need something, I'm able to go and get it. And so this point in time, I wasn't able to do that. I literally had to rely on other people. If I had the money to go to the store, I couldn't do it because I had to rely on somebody for gas. I didn't have no money to put gas in my car. I remind you, I have not been paying my own bills since March. I, I, I fell into a real strong financial hardship in March. Um, I got fired from the church that I was working at. I got fired from the church. I don't know why I'm putting so much emphasis on fired, but I need y'all to know I got fired, wrongfully fired from the church that I was working at um, in February, February 23rd, okay? wrongfully fired from the church that I was working at and so I have been in a financial hardship since March of this year and so um, God sent these angels you know to sow into my life and they have literally every month without question without complaining without any of that extra stuff that comes with people doing stuff for you without any of that they have been paying my bills my $1,300 rent and my $600 car note every month and so you know with this particular thing like I I'm already relying on people for my livelihood like I don't want to have to keep asking people for stuff so um I said Crystal you really need to humble yourself and it just is what it is like you never ask nobody for help so if you need help ask for it so you know I got to the point where I didn't mind if somebody say hey do you need something? I'm like, yeah, I do actually, you know, and half of the people still wouldn't do it, even though they asked me, 
what do you need let me know if you need anything and I would let them know and they still wouldn't come through but what I did is because I, I God has really really done a, a great work in me and he's still working what I do is I don't bash them people I don't talk about them I don't throw their name on social media I don't gossip about them to my family even if people don't know them I don't gossip about them I go and pray for them and say Lord have mercy on them because you gave them an assignment <laughs> You led them to ask me, do I need help? And they did not go back. So they're not only, they're not disappointing me. They disappointing you. They lied to you. They told you they was going to help me and they didn't come through. So, you know, that's their own. It's not for me to judge them. It's that's They're, they're going to be judged another time by, by God, not by me. And so I don't, I don't, I don't be messy like that. I don't do that type of stuff. That's not my thing. Uh, because I know who I am. I know who God has called me to be. And I know that his hand is all up, over, on top of, and through my life. And so it doesn't matter because just like he sent them, he's going to send somebody else. Like that's what people don't understand. People get so upset when you don't need them. Or when what they they thought they were stopping something because they wouldn't help you. And when it ain't stopping you, when they seeing that you still going, you, you suffering a little bit. But you still got a smile on your face. You still got your light. And you still got your joy in your heart. Like they want to get mad. But why are you getting mad at me for doing what I have to do? Don't do that. Like you know. You, you, all, people don't even understand. It was never about you. <laughs> it was never about you. Because with or without you. I'm going. She. Her. Me. Yeah. I, I, I am going to see. See. <laughs> because that is what God has called me to do. So anyway. Um. I started going to food pantries and getting food and you know I didn't hold my head low I went in there I got my little basket I picked up all my groceries and I walked out people looking at me they don't know me but people looking at me you know because they just be looking people nosy and I walked out and I had my head, head, head held high because God didn't promise me that he was going to send me to the grocery store every month with food stamps. He didn't promise me that I was going to have lamb chops and macaroni cheese and dirty rice every week. No, he promised that I would not go hungry. He promised that I would stay fed. He promised that he would sustain me and he would take care of me. He would never forsake me. That You know, he promised those things. I, so I wasn't starving. So I had to look at it through a different lens. I had to look at it with a different perspective. And even though I'm going to get this food from the food pantry, I'm still eating. I'm still fed. I was still cooking food for people. I was still handing out food to the homeless. I was still going and offering people. If I cook, hey, y'all want some food? Like, because I love to cook and I love to feed people. So that's a part of me that I was missing when I didn't have no groceries. Like, I love for people to enjoy my food. So I was still doing those things with food pantry food ain't nobody even know that's the thing nobody knows so we have to deal with these things it's our pride we i i, I could have said i ain't going to no food pantry and i would have sat right there talking about not going to the food pantry hungry looking ugly and i just wasn't finna do that um so the things that we think are super embarrassing or they call us cause us a lot of shame is not from other people it's from us it's our own inner thoughts. It's our own selves. It's the stuff that we say to ourselves. It's our pride. It's our ego. And so I had to let all that stuff go. So that's how I made it through that. So the testimony comes in at. Now I'm like, okay, so you got, that was April. And then May come around. And I'm like, I still ain't going to get those stamps. <laughs> so the end of May, I reapply for food stamps. So come July. I ain't hear nothing like what what are y'all doing I know y'all understaffed and everything like that but what does that mean for the people who are relying on this stuff for food because at this point any little extra money I was getting like I had to spend it on food I didn't have no extra money to do nothing like I'm I'm nickel and diamond with the gas tank I'm nickel and diamond here you know the little couple dollars I would get I was paying two dollars a times sometimes two dollars <laughs> but I was paying them though okay and so I take it before the Lord and I'm like Lord you know whatever whatever you have for me you know it's fine I'm okay going to the food pantry just don't let me go hungry like I'm I'm fine with that and I know a lot of people 
are thinking or have said like where is your family where is your friends girl i don't know you tell me i i ain't even got on no watch but i'll wait there's plenty family and friends that knows that i'm going through a hardship but they do not call and check on me they do not reach out and the times when i reach out to them it's really kind of like short and dry and i ain't blaming nobody for nothing because it is what it is however um i am right now creating another family here in houston i'm creating a spiritual family um because my natural family especially the ones on my mama's side they just they not they that that's that family ain't familying okay it's not giving <laughs> it's not giving now some of my family on my daddy's side and i know y'all say why are you clarifying because i know some of y'all watching and i just want to be very very clear for the ones who are watching and may think that i might be referring to you um if you think that then i am but i just want to also recognize uh Quite a bit of my dad's family have reached out to me, have sent me things, have offered money. They don't ask, do you need anything? They say, what you need, go on Amazon, go, go, you know, find what you need, send me the list. It's not a question because they already know I'm in need. So that's the thing. Like, why are you asking me if I need something when you know I'm in need? You're just wanting me to say no. So... Family don't be giving. I'm, I'm just going to... They don't. Friends, they don't be giving. They don't be giving. Friends ain't friending no more these days. They're not. And so I had to release them. Family, friends, and anything else. Release them of my expectations of them. Because I expect people to treat me how I always have treated them. But the fact of the matter is people don't owe me nothing. And people don't have to do anything for me. Which is understood. And true. And so I think the same thing good for the goose, good for the gander. I don't have to do nothing for you either. So I release them from that responsibility of my expectations and i said god help me to remove any bitterness that i have towards people help me to remove these expectations of people help me because it just leaves me in a place of disappointment and just feeling betrayed and things like that so you know especially when especially when somebody comes to me and asks me can i help you and I don't want to accept it, but I put my pride to the side and say yes. And your help never shows up. After four, five, six months, I'm still waiting on a check from people. I'm still waiting on an I'll call you back and let you know what I'm finna send you from people. I'm still waiting. But this whole situation just let me further understand that people ain't it for me. Man can't do nothing for me. I have to find everything that I need in God. I have to go to him about everything. I have to allow him to be Lord over my life. Not just my father, but Lord over my life. I have to allow him to call all the shots. And I have to allow him, I just have to allow him to be God. And so, that's what this taught me. I've been spending a lot of time consecrating and, to, and, and a lot of time to myself. Spending time with God, you know, just trying to figure out me. Asking God to search me and remove anything that was ugly, remove anything that was bitterness, remove any residue and remnants of rejection that I have felt over the years, remove all of that. So, I did all that. And, and, and I'm saying all this for a reason because I have to paint this picture. And so then I go to God again and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do about these food stamps. Oh, and my little, um, it's like an insurance plan, but not really, it's not really insurance, but it's, you might as well call it insurance. And, um, I get all um, like my health care and stuff like that, uh, paid for through the county. It's the program that they have. So you have to recertify every year. My recertification, my, my program also ended and it was time for me to recertify. So now you got me like, I got these doctor's appointments coming up. So that's something else I'm worrying about and the food and all of this. So I'm like, God, I just really need to just lay this at your feet. I can't do it no more. I ain't got no more thoughts. I ain't got no more, I ain't got no more ideas. I just don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what to do about these things. And 
he just he he's so sweet i love god he just i i just see him like open his hands like give it to me like give it to me and i like i say i've been on my face for days almost a week and so i gave it to him and i said okay you know with this car they want to come get it i know you you just paid it you did that lord but next month <laughs> Unless you're going to keep paying it. You know, I got to the point where it's like, if y'all want this car, come get it. If y'all want to evict me out this apartment, come get it. I'm not, I'm not stressing about nothing. No more. And I've been like this probably the past year or more. I just can't stress about nothing. Any little health things that come up, health concerns. God, I can't think. Here, you said lay it at your feet and you got it. Cast my cares. So here you go. You think about that because I can't do it. So with this food, I'm like, and he keeps reminding me. He keep, I mean, for the, for the past like maybe two, three weeks, God has been bringing before me the scripture, um, Matthew 6. And it starts at, it starts at like verse 25 and goes all the way through the end of Matthew 6, all the way to verse 34. So Matthew 6, verse 25 through 34, where they talks about like, you know, if God clove, clothes <laughs> the lilies of the field, then how much more will he clothe you? Like, if God feeds the fowls of the air, fowls are birds, people. <laughs> In case anybody didn't know. Fowls are birds. So if God feeds the fowls of the air, you know, and it says they don't sow, they don't reap, they don't do nothing. But they still take it care of. And he loves us so much more than a bird. He loves us so much more than lilies and grass. And he takes care of them. And they don't have to worry about nothing. So how much more will he care for us? And that is what God has just been, he's just been pounding it into my head, into my heart, into my mind, into my spirit. He just been, every time I turn around, he's pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. And then I've been on that song, Gyro, Gyro, by uh, Elevation Worship. That song has been stuck in my spirit. And they say uh, the, the verse about, you know, um, if he clothes, if he dresses the lilies, you know, at, with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? Like, that's what they say in the song. And so, he's, like I said, he's just been reiterating this word to me. So, to get to the testimony part for real. <laughs> okay. So, I'm in there. I'm praying. This was... Tuesday? Today, Thursday? So it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before. So this was Tuesday. Tuesday night. It was late. Um, it was late. And church had got canceled. I had already went to church and didn't know they got canceled, so I came back. So I was like, okay, I have to get a little spend a little extra one-on-one -on -one time with God. Cool. So I go in there and I'm praying. And then he just begins to talk to me and speak to me. And then after I get done praying. I feel like a urge. Now, let me remind you. I went back on there because I said, these food stamp people, they playing with me. They act like they don't see my little application and stuff like that to recertify. I sent them all the paperwork that they needed. So, y'all ain't got to contact me about nothing. Just check my paperwork and accept my stuff. So, I re... Um, I went back on there and instead of recertifying, I just did a whole new application. Y'all, I did the application on Monday. August 8th, right? <laughs> Monday night. It was Monday evening. August 8th, I did the application. August 9th, Tuesday, I'm in there praying. Around 9 o'clock. I got up around 9.30 p.m. And as I'm getting up, actually, as I was praying, I felt a urge to check my food stamp. Um, account and I was like ain't nothing happening one day like why do I feel like I need to check so I thought it was me just being anxious and I was like the Lord says them not be anxious about anything so girl calm yourself down and so I didn't check it 
And so I got down praying. I walked around and, you know, did whatever we do for hours. Okay. And so around like 11, 12 o'clock midnight on Tuesday night, I got the urge again. Check your account. I said, let me check this account because I just, I don't understand why I keep. So I go on there and I check my account and it said food stamps approved. $208 every month starting on September 1st. So I'm like, I am crying. I'm in tears. I'm speaking in tongues. I'm praying. I'm singing to the Lord. I'm doing, because I'm, because I, I don't understand for real. Okay, let me give y'all a little statistics real quick. Now, I look on the website for, because I told y'all the, 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 the food stamp office is understaffed at the moment and have been since the end of the year. And so they had something like 300,000 applications to recertify and process. Um, that was just, what, three weeks ago? 300,000 applications. Tell me how, tell me how I submitted an application where they have 300,000 applications already in the system. Tell me how I submitted my application on Monday and on Tuesday I was approved. Tell me how in 24 hours when God moves, God moves suddenly. God can change your life. God can change your situation in a moment. In a moment. That's why they say he, he don't come when you want him. He's always on time because he can do it in a moment. His time is not our time. He's not on our time. He doesn't reside in time. He is time. He can slow things down. He can speed it up. He can make it happen right now. He can, he can do what he, in a moment. So in a moment, God supernaturally pulled my application up to the front because they had 300,000 applications. I had just checked on the internet. I asked Google. Google knows everything. Okay? I asked Google how many applications are still pending. Three, over 300,000. And mine got approved the next day. If that ain't God, I don't know what is. I don't know what is, so I'm not done. Not only did I get my food stamps back in a moment, supernaturally, okay, $208 every month, but something said, I told you to check it. It wasn't something. Holy Spirit said, I told you to check your account. I didn't check my account. I had only checked to see if I got approved or not. So I go and I get my car and I check my account. And I said, now, if the food stamps don't start until September 1st, clearly, I just looked, why would I think that there's any money on my account? But Holy Spirit said, check your account. So I'm like, he nagging me about this. Let me check this account. Let me be obedient. I called a number on the back of the car. I checked the account. And it said, your food stamp balance is $774.00. And 70 cent. Y'all! $774.70 was already on my car. Right now, today. <laughs> and I started getting my food stamps back September 1st. So, what am I saying? I'm saying, don't worry about what situation you're going through. Don't. Don't get weary. Don't quit in your fight. Whatever you are, whatever you're believing in God for, whatever situation you are going through. Back in April, I was in tears. I did not know how I was going to eat. And I kept taking it to God. And finally, when I released it and said, okay, God, have your way. He opened up the heavens. Why on earth? <coughs> Why on earth would I have $774.70 in my food stamp card? And then getting some more next month and a month after that and a month after that. Why? Nothing but God. He has been moving supernaturally in my life, in my bills, in my personal affairs. For him to first pay my car note supernaturally 
Ain't no money come across my hand. I ain't go get no money order for that. I ain't have no ACH transaction come out my bank account. No e check, no none of that. No debit, no cash app, no Venmo, no Zelle, no 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 none of that. God did that supernaturally. And if he could do that supernaturally, so 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 here's the thing. A lot of times people, and I'm people, it's me, I'm people, people feel like, okay, they may believe in God, or they maybe they do believe in God. They may believe in miracles and signs and wonders, but they just don't think that they can happen for them. I'm one of those people. God has done a lot of things in my life, but he's never done anything supernaturally with my finances. Now, he done sent me a check that I ain't know where it came from, but again, that's tangible. I could see that. He done sent people into my life to hand me money, to pay my bills, to do this, to do that. And I have so many testimonies. But these are just the ones from this week. Not only that, but I got approved for a federal Pell Grant to go back to school. And I don't have to contribute nothing. Not zero dollars do I have to contribute for my classes to University of Houston. Zero dollars. This is all this week, you guys. As of yesterday. So we're talking about within three days. These are the miracles. These are the things that God has been doing for me. And so I'm saying all this because the word says that people are saved by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony or word of your testimony. And how will people know that they can get through these things if people don't testify? How will people know that they're not by themselves? They're not alone in their struggles. If we don't testify, how will people understand the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God if we don't testify? A lot of people feel like, why, why are you struggling? You know, you you praying, you all, you a Bible toting Christian and you all this and that. What y'all don't understand is suffering is inevitable. You're going to suffer in life regardless. So if I'm going to suffer, I'm going to suffer with God, not without him. Silly. Why would I do that? <laughs> I'm going to suffer with him and I'm going to suffer well. I've been talking about suffering well for the past couple of weeks. Even, even a while ago on one of my videos, I talked to y'all about suffering well. What is suffering well? That is, when you ain't getting no food stamps, take your butt to that food pantry and get that free food. It don't matter some of the little defective, some of the little vegetables are a little dirty, you know, then you get from the grocery store. Wash them off in your vinegar and your water. Pray over them. And be well. What is suffering well with your finances? Listen, okay. You need lights. You need water. You need all of those things. But not don't stress yourself out about it. I say all the time. Listen, I get a, I get a final notice every month for my lights. And my phone get cut off every month month my phone has been cut off for a while y'all think i care no because every time it get cut off god provides and it gets cut back on it may cost me an extra couple dollars and if i it, that's not the way i would choose to do it but since that's the way i gotta do it right now that's just what it is <clears throat> i done ran up my credit Getting credit cards that I did not want, but I needed the money right then, and I had to do it. So thank God that I was able to get credit. My credit sucks. I shouldn't be able to get nothing. My credit sucks. And it's because I've never used credit cards in the past, so I didn't have established credit. So not having no credit is just as bad, if not worse, than having bad credit. My credit sucks. There's no way in the world I should have ever got a credit card. I had to get three credit cards. And I think they all totaled maybe like $2,500. But I needed that for that moment. And God made a way. He made a way. So even if it doesn't look like what you're expecting, even if it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like, all I'm saying is to suffer well. Don't be upset. Don't be angry. Don't let your pride and your ego get in the way. Don't ask God why, 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 why. Quit looking at what you're lacking or what you think you're lacking. And look at the things that you have. Look at how much worse it could be. <laughs>
I ain't had no food, but I had a roof. And I had a car. And I was on E. But I had a car. I I got running water. Clean running water. I got clothes. I could sit up here, talk on my phone, watch my TV. I can go to somebody's house and eat. Then I got this job, and they said, "Oh, you can eat all day, all all day long. You can take high, you can eat whatever you want to, however much you want to, and you can take food home." What? Y'all don't tell me my God ain't good. He gonna put me in a job? I got. I, I'm not even gonna get into that job because that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. But anyway, that's the deal. Those are the two testimonies that I feel led to share at this moment. Well, three, because I added school on there. So those are the three testimonies that I feel led to share. Um, hey, everybody, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for joining. Um, what's this? Yes, yes, it's not easy. It's not easy, Isola. Um, Thank you, fitness instructor. I appreciate you. But yes, okay, I don't see no more questions. Um, but yeah, that's that's what was up with the video, y'all. That's everything pretty much in a nutshell. Um, God has been, let me see, Ebony, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Hey, Heather. Hey, y'all, um, I can't really see. I can't really, supernatural, yes. Yes, but... God really has been moving and um really has been moving. So y'all just um you know we've also been studying um you know increasing your faith and it works. It works y'all. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe. It's hard. It's hard to believe when you got that eviction notice that God going to come through for you. It's hard to believe when they set your date for eviction court. That God is going to come through for you. It's hard to believe after them people come repo your car. That it's, it's, it's hard to believe things that you can't see with your eyes. But I challenge y'all to stop believing what you see with your eyes. You have to, you, you, you know, eyesight is one thing, but you have to have insight. <laughs> you have to have insight. And that comes from God. That comes through the Holy Spirit from God. Um, and I'm going to end with this. My favorite artist of all time, Tupac. All right, people. Said that um, you can't believe life. He said life is a lie. And dreams are real. And I didn't know what that meant until recently. Like this life is literally trying to lie to you and make you think that you're not ever going to come into what God is calling you into. That you're not going to ever see the destiny that God has called you, you know, is preparing for you. That you're never going to see those blessings. That you're never going to see that abundance. That you're never going to have a breakthrough. That you're never going to break those strongholds. That you're never, you're, you, the devil wants you to believe in this life that you're never going to come into. That you're never going to become. That you're never going to get to that point. So, you just have to tell the devil, I know who you are. You a liar and you a thief. And you can go ahead on. You can go ahead on with that. You have to rebuke him. You have to keep him, keep him at a distance. Keep him far, far, far away from you. Cast him out. We can't send him to hell because we don't have that authority. But we can cast him out and tell him to flee. And go ahead on. We can tell them to flee and go ahead on. And just continue to believe, you guys. Continue to believe and God is going to come through. So, I love y'all. And I thank y'all. It was like two of y'all on here. But I appreciate it, okay? I am not going to despise my small be... <clears throat> I be spitting. I am not going to despise my small beginnings. So, y'all, I, I just... God bless y'all. 
God bless y'all. And I'm praying for increase and abundance in your lives. Everybody on this feed. Everybody listen to the sound of my voice. God, I speak deliverance. I speak supernatural blessings. I speak breakthroughs. I speak clarity of their minds and situations that are important that they are going through. I feel like somebody on here is um, going through some, like you're having to make some um, tough life decisions i don't know and i feel like those decisions are very weighty whatever that means to you guys but that's just what i feel that's what i'm sensing right now um so that i i'm praying that god will give you the clarity that you need to make the best decisions and give you the discernment that you need to make the best decisions for your destiny um i speak alignment in everybody's lives um on today that 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 your flesh, your days, the atmosphere will align with what God has purpose for your life. Um, yeah, I thank y'all. God bless y'all. I love y'all.